A rocket zooms past Earth with a speed of 2.0 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. Scientists on the rocket have created the electric and magnetic fields shown. What are the fields measured by an Earth-bound scientist? Express the answer for the magnetic field to five decimal places. So in this problem, we have scientists on the rocket creating and measuring two fields, the electric field and, an, and a magnetic field. Now we know from Maxwell that there is a relativity of fields. Well, what that means is observers on Earth would measure a different magnetic field possibly, and possibly a different electric field due to the relative motion of the rocket and the observers on Earth. So when observers in one reference frame measure an electric and a magnetic field, observers in another reference frame may measure different values for those fields. So our task is to determine the electric and magnetic fields that observers on Earth would create if we know what the electric and magnetic fields are measured by the observers in the rocket ship. So to do this, let's turn to our whiteboard. Let's begin by sketching the electric and magnetic fields as measured by the observers in the rocket ship. We have the magnetic field directed upwards, indicated by these arrows. We're given that the magnitude of the magnetic field is 1.0 Tesla. Now let's go ahead and express this as a vector because we will use this when we apply the Galilean transformation for fields. So the magnetic field due to the observers in the rocket ship is equal to its magnitude and we'll create a right-handed coordinate system and in this right-handed coordinate system the x-axis will be horizontal, the y-axis will be vertical, and the z-axis will be coming straight towards us. The scientists in the rocket ship also measure a, an electric field. So the electric field is coming straight towards us, represented by these series of dots. We know that the electric field has a magnitude of 1.0 times 10 to the 6th volts per meter. Expressed as a vector, we have the electric field is equal to E, which is the magnitude of the electric field, in the positive Z direction, so k hat. Now if we were to represent these fields in our picture, we would have the magnetic field going up and the electric field coming straight towards us. Well, it's important to know that these scientists are moving relative to observers on Earth. So this will be my de depiction of Earth. And here's our scientists on Earth. Now, the rocket ship will be represented by this circle, is moving with a velocity of V in the X direction. So the magnitude of the velocity of the rocket ship is given as 2.0 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. So the velocity vector is equal to the magnitude, and this is going in the positive x direction, so this will be i hat. And using subscripts, let's represent this as the velocity of the rocket ship relative to Earth. And I should also go back and use the subscripts for the electric field. So I'm going to use a subscript R to represent the electric field 
as measured by the scientists in the rocket ship. Now, it's very important to distinguish between who is measuring what, because when we apply this information to the Galilean transformation for fields, we're going to have to establish who is doing the measuring and who is doing the observing. When we originally introduced the Galilean transformation for fields, we wrote them like this. This is the electric field as measured by observers in a frame B is equal to the electric field as measured by observers in a reference frame A plus the cross product of the velocity of the observers in B relative to A with the magnetic field as measured by observers in reference frame A. From this first Galilean transformation equation for the electric field, we could see that what is measured by observers in reference frame B is dependent on whether or not a magnetic field is measured by observers in reference frame A and an electric field measured by observers in reference frame A. While I'm using the phrase reference frames A and B, let's go ahead and review what those reference frames are. We'll say observers in reference frame A are the observers that we have measurements of the electric field and the magnetic field. So reference frame A, we will call the laboratory frame. So laboratory frame. This frame is the frame that is doing the measurement. So they are the measurers or the original measurers, or you can think of them as the scientists setting up the experiment. So typically, these measurers we would consider to be stationary with respect to what they are measuring. So this is going to be the stationary frame. Now this can get kind of confusing because the stationary frame may be moving relative to another reference frame. But that's not what's important. What's really important is is this the frame in which we have measurements for? Now for this problem, the rocket ship is going to be the laboratory frame because the rocket ship has measurements for the electric field and the magnetic field. So I am going to just add my R for this reference frame. Now reference frame B is the reference frame in which we want to get the transformations for. Now reference frame B, consider this to be the frame that is moving relative to reference frame A. So we will say moves relative to reference frame A. Now what this means for our problem is that Earth is the moving reference frame, not because they're moving, but because motion is relative. So according to the observers, the scientists in the rocket ship, Earth is moving. And we would now, if we were to apply these, um, if we were to apply these conventions to our problem at hand, we're going to say Earth is reference frame B. We're going to say the rocket ship is reference frame A because that's what we have measurements for. So what that means in this context is that when we had the electric field for reference frame B, this is really going to be the electric field as measured by observers on Earth. And the electric field as measured by observers on Earth depends, or not depends rather, but, but we can find it if we know the measurement of the electric field in our laboratory frame, which is the rocket ship, 
And if we know the relative velocity of Earth relative to our rocket ship, and we would cross that with the magnetic field as measured by the scientists in our rocket ship. So this is just the transformation equation using the variables I've chosen for this problem so we can keep track of what we have. And then now we can write the Galilean transformation for the magnetic field that observers on Earth would measure. So this magnetic field is based on or can be found if we know the magnetic field as measured by the scientists in the rocket ship. And this is going to be minus 1 over the speed of light squared times the cross product of the relative velocity of Earth to the rocket ship and the electric field as measured by observers in the rocket ship. So notice with these two equations, the electric field transformation equation, the magnetic field transformation equation, if the laboratory frame measures a magnetic field, the moving frame will measure an electric field. And if the laboratory frame is measuring an electric field, the moving frame will measure a magnetic field. So that's very interesting. Two observers can disagree as to the cause of, let's say, a force on an object. But we won't disagree as to the magnitude and the direction of the force. We'll just disagree as to the cause of the force. What one observer would say is caused by an electric field, another observer moving relative to the first would say, no, that's caused by a magnetic field or a combination of the two. Well, now that we have our transformation equations for the electric field and the magnetic field, let's go ahead and solve for each one of these fields.